So this, all this month, I've been talking about the vision for our center with our theme, Abundance and Gratitude. We've, the three main qualities that I feel like our community is about is about waking up, meaning waking up to the truth of who we are, that we are one with the infinite love intelligence of the universe. When we wake up and remember who and what we are, then there's this incredible urge to express, to bring that into form and to shine our way of being, that oneness, in a unique way that no one else is. And thirdly, to connect with one another, to connect with as that divine within and without with all the beings around us. The great thing about sharing a vision is other people then start adding their, their take on it. And I love, I don't know, is Cindy here today? I thought I saw it coming. There you are. Yeah, because Cindy and, and Ben came over and they're like, it's ace. And I said, what's ace? Awake, connect, express. I love that. So that's our vision. We're ace. So when we're feeling that, when we're feeling our oneness and expressing and feeling connected and realizing that everybody is our family, we feel the abundance and gratitude of life. And that's such a wonderful thing to remember as we move into this wonderful next aspect of our year, the final five weeks of our year, which is my favorite part of the year. Today, there's three things I want you to leave with. The recognition that this time of year is a gift. It's special. It's not like any other type time of the year. It is holy, it is sacred. To recognize that there is a vision that is calling you and that the gift is here to help us see the vision for our lives more clearly than we do at other times. And to remember that we are the CEOs of our spiritual journey, the chief executive officers. Many of you who have been to the Lighthouse before know that I've talked about that this year, that this is a pilgrimage, the way I look at it. it in time. What's interesting is when the Jewish people cr created their creation story, they were in exile. So I was taking a class and they were pointing out that a lot of indigenous cultures creation myths are based on place. But because the Jewish people were in exile when they created their creation myth and they didn't have a place, they created it in time. The world was created in seven days. That, apparently that's fairly unusual. And what I love about that is because that's what this, this feels like to me. So many pilgrimages, when we think of a pilgrimage, we think of it in terms of space. You go on a certain walk for a certain amount of time. My, one of my favorite books is The Way of a Pilgrim, and he's traveling around and having these spiritual experiences on his journeys. And if you're Islam, you go to Mecca. One of the five pillars of Islam is to take a pilgrimage to Mecca. So, so many of them involve place. But I think we have this wonderful opportunity every year to recognize that the time between Thanksgiving and the end of the year, December 31st, is a sacred pilgrimage in time. For me, my experience has been that the veil is very thin at this time, that there's something happening. And, and I was grateful because I've always felt that and I started talking about this a few years ago and then just a couple weeks ago I've been reading Paramahansa Yogananda he has Christmas messages he's Hindu but when he came here he was integrating Hinduism and Christianity and so every year at Christmas he had these Christmas messages and I was just reading he was talking about the veil is thin this time of year it's a gift to us to catch, to see, to hear, to feel that which we don't normally catch, see, hear and feel so I want us to honor that. My invitation is to say this isn't, it's like Sedona. You may have heard that Sedona, the veil is very thin. I'm a skeptic. I kept hearing that so many people in our world, in the spiritually progressive world, love to go to Sedona. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, it's just race consciousness. Everyone believes it, so blah, blah, blah. But then I went. <laughs> And I was converted. <laughs> it was amazing. It was wonderful. Why is that place, why is that the veil thin there in no time at any other place? I don't know. Interestingly, when we went, we went right outside the outside of Sedona as well, and we met some uh, Native Americans. I believe they were Hopi. And they told us they thought white people were crazy for living in Sedona. They say it's a place to visit. That's where they did their sacred ceremonies. That's where they went for special events. But they said, you don't want to live in it all year round. And I was thinking about this time between now and the end of the year. It's a very intense time. I wouldn't want the whole year to be like this. But it's because it is intense. It's intense materially. It's intense emotionally. It's intense mentally. It's intense on every level. Everything is heightened. 
at this. And I wouldn't want to go through an entire year there, but to how to cultivate the richness of this season. We have Hanukkah coming up soon. Hanukkah's early this year. And that's also a journey in time, eight days. We have, we have the winter solstice, we have Christmas, we have Kwanzaa, and we have New Year's. And I just, we can't go through this without acknowledging that Christmas is, tends to be the dominant holiday. I don't think the veil is thin because it's Christmas. I think Christmas was put here because people felt the vibration and they wanted to make it sacred. I think that the veil was already thin. However, in our culture, Christmas has dominated. Now, it's a challenge for me because I like Christmas, and then I feel guilty because a lot of people feel excluded. What if you're Jewish, Islam, Buddhist, or you've been offended or hurt by the Christian religion, which is very possible, because a lot of what we think of as Christianity isn't really Christianity because there's a lot of misinterpretation of what Jesus came here to be about. Jesus came about breaking down walls. He did not come to say, I'm right and you're wrong. He did not come to create borders and walls and separation and otherness, but to create oneness. He continually crossed borders. He praised the Samaritans when they were considered outsiders and less than at that time by the Jewish people. He praised, he served Romans, women. He was constantly breaking borders and boundaries. That's who he was. For me, Christmas is not about exclusion, but inclusion of all, when we really understand the spirit of Christmas. So when I hear those songs, I don't think us versus them. I think all of us are in this together. Just as when I lived in Virginia, I had room, um, my neighbors were from Afghanistan and were Muslim. And when they went through Ramadan, they invited me and let me participate. And it was, it was at the end of Ramadan, the, cell, the Persian rugs and the lights and the, the food and the festivity. And they included me in everything. There was so much warmth and they shared about what all the holiday meant to them. And, and the women were so different than what I'd been seeing on TV. And they had just come over from Afghanistan. It wasn't like they'd been here for a long time. And the, when the men separated, it was just the women Wow, they really open up very sensual and open and free. And I just like, it was a whole other world that I never experienced. And I felt the presence of pure spirit in that environment. To me, anywhere when we're talking about God and we're saying we love God, in whatever form, I'm happy. So I recognize that there's some challenges with the fact that we have Christmas songs and it feels exclusionary. May we, at least within our own hearts, minds, and souls, interpret it. This is one with all life. This is not separation. Hanukkah's coming. Kwanzaa. Know that in our hearts, Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, Orastarians, Sikhs, what all these various wonderful paths, indigenous cultures, we are one with all of them. So we're in this high vibration. The veil is thin. What is the pilgrimage for? What's the intention for? I love the way Yogananda put it. He said, imagine you were in this room, you were in this space for our entire life. From the moment you were born, all you were was in this one room. This is all you knew. You could see out the windows, but that's all you've known your whole life. How small would our world be? We all know that there's such a bigger world out there. We know that, but the person in the room wouldn't know that. This is all they would know, that this is what they think is reality. He makes the point of, he says, the reason why he pushes so hard, and anyone who's read Yogananda knows, he pushes so hard to meditate, 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 wake up because there's so much more. You're living in a small little world, a small little idea of what we think is real. And the possibilities are so much bigger if you just stop and listen and open to these cosmic ideas and vibrations. And they are everywhere. They are giving itself to us and available to us all the time. If we just stop playing in our little box for a while and just say, I want to know what's outside the box. I want to know what's out everyth- everywhere where I've been, everything that I know. We are, we are a series of habit patterns, but we are so much more than that. And so what this opportunity is in these five, next five weeks, the veil is thin. We all, first of all, let me just say, we all are already living our vision. I don't want to say catch a vision as if up until now you haven't been living your vision. Ramana Maharshi says people spend a lot of time worrying about the, your purpose, but you're going to end up living your purpose eventually that you can't help it. It's just who you are. You're already living your vision. 
I don't want to say that you haven't been. It stops. It's not like this cutoff line. You haven't been, and now you are. It's nothing that obvious. It's a subtle opening and availability. I love what you said in your prayer this morning, Cher. It's just this continual unfoldment that we're on. But it's consciously seeing it and participating it more and more. So wherever you are in your journey, everyone here is different on your spiritual journey. The vision is going to always take you just beyond Wherever you are, it's going to take you just beyond where you were before. And it's got to be realistic. So we all can have wild imaginations. But realistically, to, to move past, I, I say that because I can imagine many things, but I don't real, really think it's going to happen. Like I can imagine, oh, I don't know, I'm a, million, I'm a, million, I'm a millionaire next year. You know, I, I have that imagination, so when I say beyond imagination, I can imagine, oh, I won the lottery, I'm whatever, a millionaire. But realistically, I don't think that's going to happen. The vision is saying, you don't think it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. And that's where it gets uncomfortable. Going outside that box can be disorienting, but it's beautiful and it's expansive and it's a gift to us. It's always going to make us more, more loving, more joyful, more free, more open, more creative, more abundant, more expressive, more who we are. It's never about becoming less than we are, but always more. And there's infinite, so you're ne- we're never done. So we want to catch this vision. and there's a, So there's another aspect about this vision that I want to be clear about. I'm saying the vision as if it's like this one static thing. Like, here's your career, this is your vision. It's not like that. It's an unfolding story, and there are many pieces of the puzzles. There's many aspects to this vision. There's many nuances and feeling tones. So every year, there's different things that will show up about this vision that comes to us. I had different visions, say, in the 90s. That was vision, got the visions. But then the years following that was about preparing, creating, doing the work to make those visions happen. So still, I'm at this time of year, I'm listening. What's the vision for my life? What's the vision? I'm aligning myself continually over and over. What needs to be done this year? What are the parts that need to be done this year? And then it was about nine or 12 years that both of these visions came into fruition. They actually came in form. It seemed like all of a sudden, but it was all those years of preparation. Every, all that whole time, I'm working with the vision, but it doesn't actually manifest until nine or 12 years later, and it's very disorienting because it all happens at once. So then the next few years are just me orienting myself and integrating all this vision that is now fully alive and manifested, and then there's the integration, and then there's the living of it, and then there became a dry period because now I've done all that, and then I caught a new vision. Actually, what, even when I caught the new vision, it had been coming much earlier. I just didn't recognize it because I was so busy on the other vision. <laughs> It's constant. It's always alive. That's what I'm trying to say here is that vision, it's not one thing. It's alive. It's not direct. It often speaks to us. Many of you know one of the images I used to get envisioning a lot in the 90s was being a cowgirl. And at first I had to say, now is that literal? And I met someone who was a cowgirl. I'm like, no, it's definitely not literal. (laughs) So metaphorically, what does it mean? And it kept coming. I couldn't ignore it. So I had to keep being with what that meant. And it has come over the years in different ways. I love that we first moved to Livermore. We came here Friday night, and the next day was uh, June 10th, the rodeo parade. I'm like, no way! I'm with cowgirls! Our board president is a cowgirl! She gave me this great picture of a cowgirl, and I have it on my altar. It has so many meanings to me. It continues to unfold. There's a whole other image that comes to me, and it came, started actually reading a book, and I was just drawn to it. And then it's come to me. I haven't looked for it. It just keeps coming at me, and it gets deeper and richer and fuller. And so that's what this, when I'm saying catch the vision, I'm not talking about like one idea, here's your career, or it's, it's, multi-dimensional. When we do visioning process, many of you know this, Reverend Michael Beckwith formalized and stru- created a structure for something he called a visioning process uh, down at Agape. So what you do is you go into meditation, you completely surrender to unconditional love. You trust the presence, the source of your life more than you trust your own ideas about your life. So you let go. Visioning is not the same as visualizing. Visualizing is you have your own idea of what you want and you create it. Visioning When I'm talking about vision, it's letting go of my ideas, because all my ideas are based on what I've known before. It's also letting go of all my fears of what might come up. That's why we anchor in unconditional love. 
So we enter into this wonderful stillness of meditation, of pure, unconditional love. We let go of all our own personal attachments, all the things we resist, and we ask, what is, and you can word it any way you want, what is God's vision of its life as me? What is the infinite love intelligence is vision of its life as me? And then you just listen. You just listen. You don't try to impose your own ideas on there. And you don't edit either. So whatever comes up, you just let it come up. And one, we, one of the things we like to say is, what does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? Smell, by the way, fragrance. Spirit has a lot of fragrance. If you've done meditation, you'll, you get smells. Um, what does it he, sound like, look like? So we use all the five senses. So you're tapping into all aspects and the dimensions of what the vision is for your life. Well, this is what we're doing for the next five weeks. We're not just, we want to meditate, absolutely. But what I want to be clear is that you don't have to just be meditating. Vision doesn't just come when we're sitting quietly. Vision can come just by asking that question, by being in the question and opening to all the senses, all the sensory input. You'll You'll be talking to someone and completely unrelated to the conversation you're having with someone, an image will fly by your awareness. And you'll, but now you're aware. You're catching it, and you'll say, that's telling me something. And then when you have time alone, you'll see, what, what was that image trying to tell me? And that's the joy of this time of season, is that there's so much going on. It's not like we have to just spend all our time in meditation, but everything is used to help us tap into these images. This vision is calling us. The vision for your life, everyone in this room has a vision. Everyone on this planet has a vision. Every child has a vision. Every teen has a vision. Every homeless person has a vision. Every person in prison has a vision. Every being on this planet has a vision for their life. It is nothing that we are, that there are some special people who have a vision and other people don't. If, if you are here, there was a divine idea behind your birth and your presence on this planet. It's already existing as you and it wants to exist even more. That's the purpose of the vision. It already is happy and joyous to be you. It is loving you, it's loving itself as you, and it's delighted and it's pleased. We celebrate that, but it wants to become more. It wants to shine even more brightly through and as us. And in ways, when I say we can't imagine, and that's why we have to listen, because when we imagine, we, we base our imagination on what we've known previously about ourselves. We have to let that go. Let the new sounds come in. Sounds will come in. Oh my gosh, why am I keep hearing this? Why do I keep hearing a church bell in my ear? What, what, what is that? What's, what was it trying to tell me? Why do I keep getting this certain fragrance? Everywhere I go, this fragrance, this smell. I don't know if uh, smells come up for me. I don't know, just smoke. This fragrance, why does this fragrance keep coming up for me? What's it trying to tell me? The veil is thin. We are in a special and holy, sacred time. The veil is thin. Catch the vision for your life. Not a new vision, but an expanded version of what you're already living. It's pushing you beyond where you've been before. That's going to help you become more of who you want to be. And lastly, we are the CEOs of our spiritual journey. And this is really important because we also know, as I've mentioned, this is a really intense time of year. We have demands upon us at work. Sometimes work gets busier this time of year. Sometimes... Uh, all the social, the family expectations. Sometimes we want to be with them, sometimes we don't, but still it's a lot. And the gift giving and the material aspect and the financial aspect and the traveling aspect and want to make sure you make the different parts of your family happy or or it brings up a deep sadness because people that you've loved are no longer there and you're going through the holidays. I mean, there's so many things happening. Like I said, this, this five weeks is an intense period. But you get to choose where you place your attention. There is no other CEO of our spiritual journey. If I'm going to make use of this next five weeks, if I'm going to make this a truly holy pilgrimage, I have to decide that. What's interesting, my dad gave me an article years ago about stress. And I've never forgotten it. And he said, the stress of CEOs is different than the stress of the employees. (laughs) Because the CEOs work hard. I have two brothers who are in the CEO position, and they work really hard. But the difference is is the CEO is is always at choice. The employees are are often doing things that were handed down or are being told them what to do. But if you are the CEO of your journey, you are at choice. This is your spiritual journey. This is your spiritual This is your five weeks. This is your time to take time to be still. No one else is responsible for that. 
If you don't have time, if you don't take time to meditate or to be still, or if you're not taking time to pay attention to the images or really setting the intention to hear the vision in your, for your life in a new way that you've never heard it before, there's no one else, the CEO has no one else to blame. The buck stops here, right? The CEO is a wonderfully empowering position role, but it's also a hugely responsible role. And I became more aware of this. I think what really inspired this aspect of the journey is because I read something really that broke my heart this week. David Cassidy died, made his transition. He was a teen idol. And there was a little something that I totally would click on. It's clickbait for me. David Cassidy's last word to his daughter. Powerful last words. I'm like, I've got to see what those are. (laughs) So I opened it up, and I was expecting something really cheesy, but instead it was really short. His last words to his daughter was, so much wasted time. I thought, oof, can we imagine that being the last things that we think on this planet is so much wasted time? Our time here is precious. The world is constantly telling us how we should be spending our time, what we should be doing, what should be important to us, where we should place our values, what's important to other people. We have to claim what's important to us. We have to claim what is important to us. So it's not just when you leave your body, whenever that is, but in five weeks, Something as simple as five weeks is a very, very short period of time. Five weeks is December 31st. On December 31st, do you want to be saying, oh my gosh, the holidays were so fast, I was so busy, I, can't, I don't even know where it went. I was just going, 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 and here I am, I haven't even thought about 2018 yet, I've got to hurry up and think about what my intentions are because I haven't had a chance to think about it. Is that where you want to be on December 31st, or do you want to be... Man, I just had the most amazing five weeks. I've been listening to spirit, and I'm I'm just so grateful for the clarity of the vision that's been pouring through me. See, see, CEOs are the vision visionaries of their company, right? Who's the visionary of your company? The CEO. Who's the visionary of your spiritual journey? The I am of you. So you have to. You want to be a visionary CEO, and the CEO also then leads the steps. What are the next steps to bring that vision into reality? That's what 2018 is, those intentions. So for one year, 1991, I got clear. The vision for what I needed to do was to put God first in my life. Got clear on that, and then I started asking, how am I going to do that? I came up with my, my, my spiritual practices. I didn't come up with them on my own. I'm listening. It's all, this is all listening. 11.30 at night, December 31st, 1991, I'm sitting by myself at my dining room table. I put a little altar. I'm writing my journal. I'm setting my intentions for what the vision is for my life and how I'm going to live it. And those are my spiritual practices. I started them on January 1st, 1992, and I've been doing them for 25 years and will probably do them for the rest of my life. We are the CEO of our spiritual journey. That's our opportunity. We have five weeks Five holy, sacred, amazing, glorious, lovely weeks, if we claim it to be that, where the veil is thin. Think that you're in Sedona. It's it's like being in Sedona for five weeks, all right? It's great. We have a vision. Everyone here has a vision for your life, and it is bigger than what it was this past year. I guarantee you it is more than it was this past year. Whatever your vision was up until now, it's great, and it's even more than that. Let's listen. Let's take that time, claim our authority, claim the leadership of our own journey, know the vision for our journey, stand in our power, claim it, claim how we're going to bring it into fruition in 2018. So when we're standing here in five weeks, December 31st, we are going to be a fully empowered community. Every individual, I believe, I believe that we are all going to be standing in this clarity and enjoy and enthusiasm of 2018 because we're going to know who we are and where we're going. You with me on this? All right, let's pray. Vision vibrations. It's a high vibration time. So we're standing in the precipice of this wonderful five-week journey. And even as we acknowledge this holy and sacred time, 
for this moment as we go into prayer together, we want to transcend time. We want to let go of one particular moment in time. We want to let go of any particular place. We want to be free. Because we recognize that the pure spirit is never limited to any one point in time and space. It is never limited to any point in time. It is absolutely free and unconditioned, unlimited. There are no walls, there are no boundaries, there is no other, there is no them, there is only the one. It includes all time and all space and all dimensions. It includes the galaxies upon galaxies upon galaxies and the billions and billions of stars. It includes all the multidimensional time and space continuums that we can't even begin to imagine. It includes all of that and it transcends and is beyond all of that. It's beyond anything we could ever of our human mind know or understand. So we let that human mind go for now and we just rest in the pure beingness that is everywhere and beyond and yet closer to us than our very breath. It is who we are. There is no place where this infinite love intelligence stops and something else begins. It is everything. It is all that we are. Every atom and cell of our body, temple, every organ, action, and function is pure spirit. Our emotional life is pure spirit. Our mental life is pure spirit. Our energy life is pure spirit. Everything that we have ever been and ever will be is pure spirit. There is no way to be outside of pure spirit. We are it. We are alive. We are awake as pure spirit this very minute. We are conscious of the magnificent truth of who we are, that we are infinite oceanic love. We are the intimacy beyond wildest imagination. We are the abundance. We are the financial abundance. We are the creative abundance. We are the playful abundance. We are the free abundance. We have abundance of all the qualities, beauty, harmony, peace, love, joy. It is overflowing in every aspect of our being. Nobody on this planet, no sentient life form is limited. Everything is created as this beautiful, infinite, oceanic presence of pure light, love, and peace. We remember to remember day in and day out who we really are and what life is. We see it, we feel it, we hear it, we smell it, we taste it. Everything is alive and awake as one, as one. We see each other and we see ourselves. In every face, we see the face of God. We see the face of the one life, the one power. There's nothing opposing us. There's nothing contrary to the one life and the one power that we are. We are not fighting against anything. We are not pushing against anything. We are just allowing the glory of the living God to be awake and alive of us right here and right now. And from this awake and aliveness of who and what we are, we recognize that we each have this beautiful, unique vision for our life that is just ours. It doesn't belong to anyone else on this planet and any other life form. It is simply our vision to be and to shine and to express on this planet Earth at this point in time and space. It is a gift given to us by this infinite love intelligence. It was given to us before we were born it has been given to us and revealing itself little by little throughout our entire life and I know that this next five weeks we are open to it in ways we've never been open to it before we feel we hear we see we taste we touch all aspects of this vision for our life we just say allow it to pour itself to call itself into being through our conscious awareness we catch those moments those images those feelings those sounds those sights that are saying yes that are saying yes to our specific and unique special image vision for our life how grateful I am that we are seeing it and feeling it this is God's gift to us in this holy season we have been given the gift and we receive the gift with gratitude and standing in the power of who and what we are we claim it we claim it for this year to come that we are this becoming we are this becoming more magnificent than we've ever been before in joy and harmony and peace and love and grace and beauty and abundance on all levels and dimensions yes 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 that is who we are and that is the gift of the season thank you God thank you God thank you God in deep abiding awe, humility, unconditional acceptance, joy, gratitude, peace. I just let this word be now. I joyfully let this word be now, knowing that as it is spoken, it is done. And I invite us all to say together, so it is. Amen and amen. And so it is. So it is, and so it is, Amen. Amen. 